Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Brett Weaver. I'm an engineer at Intuit. And for the past five years, I've been focused on supporting our migration to the AWS cloud. There we go. Intuit's mission is powering prosperity around the world. We have over 50 million customers around the globe who are helping to achieve their dreams by simplifying their financial lives. Intuit has an all-in strategy with the AWS cloud. We are focusing migrating all of our traditional data centers onto AWS's infrastructure. AWS's rapid pace of innovation, focus on customers, and ability to quickly iterate on new features make them an ideal platform for Intuit. Happy to be here today to talk about our migration to AWS, some of the products that use S3, and some of the unique challenges we've solved with S3 at Intuit. So first, TurboTax. So I'm happy to announce in the 2017 tax season, 100% of tax returns that were processed during the peak season, so you think April 15th of uh, 2017, were run through AWS's platform. Uh, that's every single transaction filed. I think we had over 500 concurrent sessions running at that time in AWS. This was a huge milestone for us because it proved that we could run our most sensitive, critical, and security-focused workload on AWS. The results exceeded expectations. We actually saw uh, a decrease in operational incidents as well as improved performance workload was moved to AWS. Oh, cut out for a second there. So, Intuit believes we can help our customers make better financial decisions by providing them insights with the data we have. Recently, Intuit announced we partnered with AWS on our data analytics lake project. We are collecting a lot of data about our customers in this lake from our flagship products, including QuickBooks, TurboTax, and Mint. This data is used then to give advice to our customers from everything towards getting a loan to getting the, best, getting the most money back on their tax return. S3 is critical in this as it provides the security, auditability, and scale we need for success. So those are some of the products that use S3, but S3 is a core building block application at Intuit. I feel like I'm cutting out. It's availability everywhere, supports all our required security controls, so including KMS and CloudTrail as PD discussed, powerful language, and most importantly, data and control plane auditing make it an invaluable tool for us to solve both our application storage as well as many other use cases we have for exchanging and storing data. I'm going to talk about a few about those right now. So, as PD discussed, it's possible to create an S3 policy which allows you to secure access to a bucket based on the VPC endpoint. So at Intuit, like many of you, we have many virtual private clouds used by a lot of different teams distributed across a variety of AWS accounts. There are times when we want to distribute data to all of those VPCs for uh, various uh, security or, or centralized services. However, it's not always practical to access each of those uh, instance roles within those accounts and modify the policy to grant access. Here's an example of a bucket policy we've used to actually constrain access to those VPC endpoints. So as PD discussed, you're going to see something very simple here, a principle of STAR. Um, this is going to illustrate a point about how a valid policy such as this one, which we have used in production, can have a principal star and only have a small condition which prevents it from overly privileged access. For example, in this one, we allow get object, the action on a get object to a specific resource, and only when it matches those VPCs. This shows you the fine line. If someone was to remove that condition or change it to a star, you could easily share access with that one with that bucket to an overly permissive set of consumers. So my next one. PD touched on this. This is one of my favorites. Is uh, AWS recently released the principal org ID. So this allows you to share a bucket with all AWS accounts in your organization. So like most enterprises, Intuit has many on-premise sites, 
both for our workforce as well as for our application workloads, as well as many AWS accounts in regions around the world. Again, we don't always have the ability to provide access to each one of those instance roles for data we place in a, in a central bucket. And in many cases, the workforce computers or the actual on-premise application servers don't necessarily have an instance role or valid AWS credentials, which would allow them to download data from that bucket. To solve this, we can again use a very concise bucket which takes advantage of the, of the uh, uh, park, uh, as, uh, as PD coined, uh, to use a very wide granted principle of star, provides the actions of list and get, so allowing read access to a very specific set of buckets, and then constraining it based on two conditions. So the first condition here you see shows a source IP address. This is the egress IP address of our corporate data centers. And this could include multiple of them to encompass all of our data centers around the world. Once principle is star, but access is constrained by a condition, very, very small, real, small uh, policy separating overly permissive access to access that's very valid and used widely in production and into it. And the second one uses principal org ID, as we discussed before, which allows any AWS account which has a valid IAM role with credentials to access that bucket in our AWS organization. So between the two of these, we have a very powerful ability to write a policy which allows us to put data in a bucket that's available to all of our traditional data center servers, all of our workforce, as well as all of our AWS accounts. So finally, this is one of my favorite ones, but it's a sharp knife, so use with care is. You can actually create a policy to set a essentially shared secret on a bucket. So add into it, at times we have legacy application software, or sometimes we work with external vendors or partners who may not necessarily be able to upgrade their software to use the Amazon SDK. We still might want to integrate with them to exchange data, provide them data, or have them provide data to us using S3. With a shared secret, we can actually set the user agent to be that password, essentially, where, a, where we can set a shared secret on that bucket to allow for access to be controlled simply by how the user agent is set on the uploading client. So again, the example here, the principal is star, and we allow put object and put object ACL on this specific bucket. We then have a condition where the string user agent equals the secret. If you use this policy, change it to something better, the secret. But essentially what this requires is that when the client is uploading data to this bucket, their user agent is set to whatever that string is under the, uh, where the secret is. And then below that, you see we have a deny policy. As PD discussed, if you put data in a bucket and you don't specify an owner, and in this case there is no owner because there's no uh, uh, AWS identity associated with this client, uh, it will have no access. And so in this case, we have to give the bucket owner full control. The second uh, policy will deny any request that does not provide bucket owner full control of the data put into it. And then what a lot that allows is you can actually run a curl command such as this. So a curl, curl request, put some data, you can do a file, and then you just set the user agent to whatever that string is that you specified within the policy, within the policy and then provide the bucket owner full control putting that data in that bucket. This can then be further constrained by adding additional conditions to that policy, such as IP addresses and some of the other ones that are available in the IAM and S3 documentation. So I encourage everyone, as you're looking at S3 and looking at how to use it to share access within your organization or with your partners, there is copious ways to use IAM and S3 to open access in very specific ways based on your use case. Get familiar with the S3 and IAM documentation and take a look at all the ways you can do that. So what I'm going to transition now to is what that means as far as protecting data. So as we shared in some of those policies, it's a very small change that separates a valid, appropriate policy, which we use in production, from one that could easily overshare data outside of Intuit or potentially even publicly. One of our first protections is encryption. So we have a very uh, well-defined data handling and encryption policy. For any, non-sensitive, for any non-sensitive data, and what that essentially means to us is any data that's not public, we classify as non-sensitive. We KMS encrypt it. 
So this has all the benefits of KMS encryption the PD discussed. You meet compliance requirements. The data is encrypted at risk when it lands on hard drives in Amazon's data centers. But it also has one additional side benefit in that if a policy is made overly permissive, say somebody replaces a star where it should be a specifically constrained VPC endpoint, it actually prevents download of that data because even though the access to that data is provided by the S3 policy, they may not necessarily, or they, hopefully they will, not they will not have access to that KMS key to allow them to decrypt that data. So additionally, in addition to KMS encryption, for sensitive data, so, and you can imagine the kind of things we hold, you know, that, that we would consider to be more sensitive, we application level encrypt that data as well. And what that means is it's encrypted on a process outside of Amazon's control, uh, outside of KMS, so they should never see the plain text of that. So this could be a cloud HSM or application software that you run on your client side. This has the added benefit of Amazon never sees anything except ciphertext. They only, they never see the plain text. And if somehow all the other controls were subverted and that data was downloaded, it would be a ciphertext blob that the, the person who require, acquired it would not be able to decrypt. In addition to encryption, we also focus on ensuring that all of our policies in all across S3 and many of our other AWS resources don't exceed their uh, permissions which are appropriate for sharing with the valid consumers. And so we've adopted Cloud Custodian's excellent policy and Capital One's excellent policy engine framework, Cloud Custodian. It allows you to set policies across your enterprise and ensure adherence to those and take action when those policies uh, are violated. So if a bucket does become public inappropriately, you can send an alert or even immediately remediate that and set that bucket back to being private. This has been a huge help in allowing us to raise our confidence and lower the risk that we would actually share something inappropriately outside of Intuit. However, our preference is still always to prevent insecure settings versus detect and remediate, which is why I'm so excited about the feature that PD announced today to block public access. It's going to allow us to, for a broad swath of Intuit, set public access to false, and only in those very, very specific use cases allow it to potentially be open where we know it is appropriate to share that data more broadly. Thank you very much. Appreciate you taking the time to listen. And for anyone who's interested in our data analytics lake or TurboTax migration or security in general, please feel free to come talk to me. Or there's a couple other sessions coming on today, the AIML 404 track, the Architecture 307 track, and the Security 305 track, which will be going into deep dives on the TurboTax migration, our AIML data lake project, as well as security at Intuit. Thank you very much, and here's PD.